Welcome back. Typical tank water heaters can waste energy. By design, they continue to heat water to keep it at the right temperature, just waiting for you to use it. But what if we could take the energy created by Mother Nature to do the same job? Joining me now is Lon Schwickerath, a professor here at Kirkwood Community College. And Lon, we're talking about a solar thermal water heater, and I see over our shoulder we have what looks like solar panels, but it's not. No, they're not really solar panels, they're solar collectors and they have a glycol water solution that circulates through them from a pump that is on the inside of the building. And as the sun heats it up, and being dark and black like that, it absorbs a lot of the energy from the sun, and that's transferred to the glycol solution, which goes inside, and then the water from the water heater circulates through a heat exchanger, and then that transfers the heat from the solar into the water heater. Okay, Lon, we're outside, and it's a very cloudy day today. Is that still, we can still work? It'll work, but of course there's not much heat coming off the sun, but you will get the heat. There's a backup electrical system in there, similar to an electric water heater with an immersion element in it. Okay, and I'm sure many of our viewers are wondering, what about in the morning? I wake up, I want a warm shower. Does it still work? It'll still work because of that backup element that's in there, that heating the water continuously if the solar is not working. Okay, so we see that here, but there's much more behind the scene? Yes. Okay, should we take a look? All right. Lon, we're inside the Kirkwood Plumbing Lab, and, and tell us what we're looking at now. Well, right here we have the heat exchanger and the pumps that do most of the work for the solar system here. Now, this, this pump here brings the glycol solution in from the solar panels, circulates it through a heat exchanger, and then pumps it back out, and so it keeps recirculating the sun keep heat, keeps heating it up. And then the water from the water heater here is circulated with another pump through the heat exchanger. So that transfers the heat through from this collector panels into the water heater itself. And right here we have an expansion tank because hot water of course expands and that's to control that expansion. Uh, here we have an electric water heater that has an uh, immersion element backup for it which if the sun doesn't shine or if it's night, it'll continually provide you with hot water. Uh, also up here we have a tempering valve because sometimes that sun can get awfully hot and the water can get overly hot. And so it has to be tempered as it comes out of the water heater. So this tank has a, has a few more valves coming in or, or tubes coming into it than a, than a typical one? Um, but it's basically the same as an electric water heater, but there are more openings to provide for the extra circulation through it. And as we are in here, just on the other side is those panels that we saw when we were outside, yes. correct? Now, as, as we look at this, is, is this complicated? Is it something that, uh, I mean, is, is difficult to, to put in place? Um, well, it is difficult because you can see there's quite a bit of piping involved in it. Um, all this was, like I said, was put in by the Kirkwood stu plumbing students here. But if you have a little bit of skill, you'd be able to do it yourself. But generally, you'd want to hire a contractor. So, Lon, what do we look at in terms of cost if we, if we were to put this system in? Uh, it was probably with the uh, plumbing and everything, the piping, probably around $15,000. Uh, for a typical homeowner, they could probably get one for around 10000 because we wouldn't have the bigger, as big a panels outside and maybe the tank inside here right. might be less. Yeah. And the piping wouldn't be as much because, okay. you know, a smaller area. Many of our viewers in older homes, can this be retrofitted to an older home? It can be retrofitted. Um, there might be a little extra work involved in, in getting the piping from the basement out to the roof because normally the panels are on the roof. Well, Lon, this has been fascinating. It's, it's neat to see here at the Kirkwood Plumbing Lab what the students are doing, again, thinking about saving energy and, and taking energy created uh, that's out there that we can use to, uh, to heat our home. So thanks for sharing that with You're us. You're welcome. And if you'd like more information about solar thermal water heaters, go to our website at powerhousetv.com.